Welcome. My name is Kevin McCurdy from Plastic Pipe Fabrication, a division of EJ Prescott. We'd like to introduce you today to the Rhino High Density Polyethylene Manhole. And someone that we have here to help go over this product is a representative from Rhino of Oregon, is John Pickett. Thank you, Kevin, for the introduction. The Rhino Manhole was developed to uh, overcome hydrogen sulfide corrosion in, in manhole and wastewater systems and uh, it comes with a lot of advantages with the pre-molded steps, the five flow channels in the base. We also offer a round base for larger diameter pipe. The uh, five channel base only goes up to 12 inch diameter. The uh, flow channels are molded in with a 1% grade so that the material always just flows right on through. It's easily adapted to any style pipe, whether it's PVC, concrete, cast iron, HDPE. And uh, various components will take it right up to grade level. It is H20 live load rated when properly installed. The gasketing structure assures that we have no infiltration, no exfiltration. Roots don't penetrate and uh, completely immune to all hydrogen sulfide and the vast majority of other chemicals. At this time, I'd like to go over some of the features and benefits of the high-density polyethylene manhole from Rhino, some things that you don't have with a, with a concrete structure. Uh, the first thing is the sized outlet nipple, which keeps your flow channel line exactly flat on the bottom. These are sized for 8, 10, and 12-inch SDR35 pipe, so that the pipe can be belled directly onto that nipple. If you need the 10, you cut it off. If you need the 12, you cut it off here, and that'll allow you to bell the pipe right onto that nipple so that the flow direction is in the proper, the proper way. So that you'd be just belling the pipe on there with no need for an additional coupling, uh, other, either flexible or, or PVC. So that's, a, that's an obvious benefit. Now if we can take and flip this uh, manhole up, I'd like to show you some of the features of the inside. too far forward. This is our five inlet base. This is for sanitary sewers. The outlet of course is up to 12 inch. It's already molded in. You can see there's five separate places to be able to put in the inverts. The inverts can be put in at the here in the shop at the factory or they can all be done on site. Um, there's three different ways to put the invert pipe into the manhole. One is by extrusion welding. Another is the Fernco quick coupling or the quick seal. The other is the inserted T. Um, they're all adequate ways. The extrusion welding takes a trained personnel, but the, uh, the Fernco quick seal or the inserted-y are both simply to uh, drill a hole the proper size and location and put those together and we'll go over that in a minute. This bottom section is 30 inches high overall. It has the lip here for the gasket. I'd like to show you that gasket. You grab me a gasket Mike. This is the four foot foamed section gasket. This gasket is impermeable to water. It's also not affected by hydrogen sulfide. This gasket can be, this, the structure itself can be water tested or vacuum tested. And this gasket will hold 20 inches of mercury on a vacuum test. When applying this, when putting the gasket on the structure, just make sure it's properly seated. Once we place the gasket, we'll go around to make sure that it's even and properly seated all the way around the circumference. And 
And now the gasket needs to be lubricated top and both sides for the assembly of the next section, whether it be a cone or an extension section. You want to use a generous amount of lubricant. Make sure the gasket is lubricated on the top and both sides. The thing to make sure of when these extensions are put on is that you've got the stairs lined up with where you want your entry point to be. If this is an eccentric cone, you want to make sure that you have that in the proper position. It can be rotated to any position around this manhole. To check, after placing the section on it, you want to make sure to check and make sure that that gasket is seated all the way around, that you can feel that gasket, it's not bunched up. And I can feel that gasket at the same point underneath all the way around. That check is important to make sure that this manhole is properly seated. The next section is a cone section. The cone sections come in either concentric or eccentric. This particular manhole here has a cutout. We use it as a demo so you can see inside of it. We're going to place the next gasket on top and set the cone section on. Again, make sure that all surfaces on this gasket are coated. The outside, the inside, and the top of the gasket. You can see from the two of us carrying this that it's fairly light. Now we're going to line up this opening, and that's going to put our stairs in the right position. A little more. Go around and check in for gasket placement. And it's nice and even all the way around. As you can see that the steps are offset in the structure. So that it makes for easier climbing. This is a concentric cone. Which you'd normally use for a catch basin. We also have eccentric cones. And those would be more for the sewer. It can be used for storm water. But it just lines up the ladder with the opening better than it does on a concentric cone. Because a concentric cone you'd want for a catch basin so that the material is dropping di directly down into the center of the catch basin. This cone can be cut to the desired height or the finish height if you add in the height of your frame and cover. If this is in a roadway, it does require that a pad be poured or a precast pad be placed around this structure to support the frame weight. The concrete won't actually be resting on this, but it will be up against this neck. And again, this can be cut to the slope of the road into the height once you combine the height of this with your frame and cover height. There is a gasket that goes on top that can help seal the frame and cover. The requirement for a pad around this structure 
in order to be H20 roadworthy, would be either a five foot square or a six foot round concrete, a minimum of eight inches thick. I'm going to take this cone off now and we're going to show you that gasket on the top. This is what the frame and cover or the frame and grate would set on. This simply goes on top of this cone section lip just like the section gaskets do. This doesn't require any lubrication because you'll just be setting your frame and grate or your frame and cover on top. We do have round to square adapters. If you're using square catch basin frames, we can easily accommodate them so that there's no void between the corners of the frame and this opening. This gasket then seals against your manhole frame and cover or catch basin frame and grate. Makes a nice gasketed seal. The option to this is if it's not in a roadway, we do have pre made covers. The pre made covers go on without the gasket. These covers are made so that they overhang the lip so there is no penetration of water in in between the cover and the and the manhole because all the water would run on the outside of the structure for this you would simply cut this to the grade height that you wanted the cover is also available with the handles or without and that's an off-road cover installation. Again, there's no infiltration between the, the manhole structure and the cover because of the seating directly on that lip.